Hi, this is Brian Haberlin from DigitalArtTutorials.com. Um, and a word of introduction about my uh, tutorials. I record them live. I don't go back and edit unless there's some phone ringing or something annoying that shouldn't be happening. Uh, what you see is what you get. I do them full, real time, uh, palettes open, and uh, I even occasionally goof up. But I think that's infinitely valuable in a learning environment because then you see me fix my goofs up goof ups see just did one there and uh and then uh show you how to do it right and i bet you half the time when you're going to do some of these things you're going to do the same goof ups i did and you're going to need to know how to fix them so uh uh that's all i want to say enjoy the tutorials and thank you for purchasing them Okay, here's another style. This is a uh, actually a layout page. These aren't full pencils. Uh, I know, but they're they're nice tight layout pages uh, from a new graphic novel that I'm doing called uh, Shifter. Uh, I'm going to focus on that panel in the middle, and we're going to go with another inking technique. Okay, um, this is more of a pseudo gray. Greg Land sort of John Casty kind of thing where instead of doing the inking, let me make a new layer here real quick to show you in multiply mode. Instead of doing the inking with uh, what would be our pseudo quill style or pen style it's sort of a pen and then a like a prismacolor or or china marker pencil effect okay um but there's still a little bit of inking so we're going to go with the basic inking on it first and sometimes you want to like this is fairly dark this is going to get in my way i think so i'm going to actually put one more sheet of white paper and of course it helps if it's white paper uh <laughs> between there and bring down the opacity of it. So that sandwich in between, it's almost like a sheet of tracing paper. This way, it, when I'll see when I'm doing my black, I'll, I'll see it a lot easier, okay? So I'm just working on this panel. Excuse me. Oh, I somehow have my stamp tool on there. All right. Go with a slightly larger brush, go to nine. And I'm just really just doing the holding lines. So I'm just going to do the basic big lines here. His eyes are closed here. out this area now I'm doing this all with the brush the absolute fastest way to do big areas of black would be for me to do grab the lasso tool make sure it's not doesn't have an anti-alias or the feathering on and go through like see this black area he has here up to the hair Fill with black. Go here. I'm holding the shift key, so I'm going to do all the little kind of black areas really quick here. And then finish off with the pen before going to our sort of chalky style brush. And what's nice about this is it really can give you some really nice shaped lines. Very quickly. Maybe even a bigger line down there. Hold the Alt key and I can anchor. Anchor back here, then draw in here.
then Alt Delete fills with foreground color. And that's the fastest way to kind of get started with your basic black shapes. Okay, I'm going back to my brush. See how I'm kind of, you know, I want to get a little bit of that bounce. I want to vary my pressure so I get thick to thin. Again, sometimes do a little bit of a double line for interest. doing all the basic lines. I'm kind of staying away from any hatching because that's going to be done in the other style. Jawline. I'm gonna fix this next neckline a little bit better. Okay, so again, if we look at it without the line art, it's pretty, pretty simple. Okay, do these little bubbly guys. All right, now, instead of going in and doing shading like this with the pen, what we're going to do instead is take all these hatchings and make them into more of a shaded, shaded look. This is my better chalk. I had an old chalk. This is a better one. Uh, and how it works is... There's a pencil texture behind there, a paper texture that I've made, okay? And you press lightly and you put down bits of the shading. And you can make it so you're putting down more shading and less solid blacks by messing with the, uh, the paper. Uh, the paper depth right there and you can make the paper texture finer by reducing the paper size. Problem is when you go really small with it it's doing too much of a repeating texture so you don't want to go too small. Let's see how that looks. That's alright. Now let's see how this works on this this particular piece. So I'm going light, and I'm going to pull in darker down here. So I'm going light pressure, getting little dits, and then getting darker. So I think this pattern we have here probably is a little bit too harsh for here. This would probably be better for a background. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and switch this texture out to another one. Let's go ahead and actually let's see what it looks like not inverted to. Uh, it's still a little, a little rough for me. Just wanted to see what my settings were there. Let's go ahead and go to another one. See how this one works for us. The 
let's change it to a hard mix. No, that's not going to do it for us. Let's go to another one. Let's see. Let's try my pencil texture. And make it black. Yeah, I think this is going to be better for us. There you go. That's a better, better texture. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here with white and knock back this area in here. And now I'm going to do it with this one. And so I'm just lightly going. And you'll see how it gives me just a nice little shading. Very light here, a little bit more here. And go ahead and give me a little bit here into the hair. And again, it's like it's kind of like you're shading with a pencil, but really what you're getting is a nice black dither or rendering. So it's just another way of doing that hatching. You know, because hatching is all an optical blending in your eye puts together the shading. It's not really light shades of gray. This kind of does that as well. If you want to, you can go under the whole nose. Or not. Again, you can you know, scale up the pattern. You can make it so... Let's see how this one looks like on height. Sometimes height is a better mixing because you can control it a little bit better. So I can press really hard and build up the height as opposed to that one. Cause it's, easy, it's easier to render because I can press hard now as opposed to having to press really, really light. And then if anything becomes too harsh, you can always, you know, go back in with white and just you know, either soften it up or get rid of it altogether or you name it. And you can also do this shading on another layer if you want to. Like, let's see. You know, again, there's certain points where you want to see how it looks. I'm going over white right now. You can even let go, you know, if I wanted to break up the hair line a little bit there. And you get much more of a, again, remember that it's going to be small, so. It's more of a dithered sort of 
shading. Selecting really outside this so I can get rid of some of this. And two, if you go to the eraser, you know, you can soften it up even with gray as grays if you wanted it just to be grays, which is actually a fairly interesting look. See, I'm just going over it lightly with the eraser. Then it becomes sort of a softer kind of thing. But it definitely is more finished than it was before. Um, and it's just, again, this is a different way of approaching it. Okay? Um, All right, uh, there we go. Hi, this is Brian Haberlin. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, and please subscribe when you get a chance. Uh, also, if you want to get more cool free stuff, uh, my two sites are digitalarttutorials.com and traditionalarttutorials.com, where we have all kinds of cool events and free stuff for you to check out. Thanks.